folks, Ariel over here, finally getting to do this that I've been itching to do since I took these out of the hive. Um, the reason it waited is because I had some other things I had to get done before winter rolled in. And if you look outside right now, it looks like winter is here. Anyway, this is a universal extractor that I got from Dr. Leo, horizontalhive.com. So it fits my great big size of frames here with the Malayan style hive. And it also um, would fit anybody else's, like playing as siblings who have bees. So if they want to bring honey over here and extract it, they'd be able to use it too. To use this, um, push the handle and I want to go really slow and I'm finding it just spins faster than I even want. Um, very, very easily. This does not take any effort. In fact, the effort required is to keep it from getting away from you. And this handle, it's kind of neat. I didn't realize that was how it works. When you lock it in like that, you are spinning. If you can hear that sound, it sounds a little bit like rain. It's the nectar hitting the side walls as centrifugal force pushes it out. Anyway, when the when you let go of the handle, it pops out and spins freely without turning the handle anymore. But I can I can see it hitting the sides there and draining down in. Now we're in the corner of the shop here. I cleaned up this whole corner and swept up all the dirt and stuff, so we have a pretty clean environment um, because extracting honey is best done in a warm environment. And um, as you can see outside, it's not a warm environment. So for us doing it in here, that stove behind there does not look like it has much flames in it yet, but I actually got it really warm in here overnight. And this morning I am hot. <laughs> it's like 80 degrees in here because you need a good warm temperature for honey to extract easily. If it's too cold, it gets so thick, it's hard to do. And so that is why we're in here right beside the wood stove where we've got a nice warm temperature and why I'm in a t-shirt and short skirt while it is raining out, or I mean snowing outside. Out of here, this doesn't walk very much for something that spins like this. It's just sitting on its legs on the concrete floor here in the shop. And there I'm getting a slight wobble because these frames aren't, aren't exactly balanced because some have more honey than others. If I had enough to pick from, I'd try to make them a little more balanced, but it's not trying to walk all over the floor. So that is nice. So what I'm working on here, in terms of the camera can see it, is just slowly popping all the little caps off all these little honey cells. I know there's different tools to do this, like a hot knife and so on. And maybe if I was doing hundreds and hundreds of gallons of honey every year, I would get something different. This seems to be working for now. It's just a little bit of a slow process. I'm just working my way up from the bottom. That was a tip I got, because if you start at the top, the honey you've uncapped will start to drip down on top of you as you go. This one's got you know a little bit of a an empty spot here in the middle. That makes it a little bit more of a pain to go around. Anyhow, this little frame that holds it is another thing that I got from Dr. Leo. Makes it real easy to work on this without um, having it run all around on you and anything that drips off the first side that I have uncapped gets caught in that little pan. Just putting all the cappings over here in this little bowl. But you can kind of see how they almost, if I get it right, I'm trying to get good at this, they almost pop off like there, like a whole little flake of lids just detaches from the uh, cell walls. It's a little bit better I find up there where it's like bright new wax rather than down on the comb that like where I am now that had brewed in it at one point. That's why it's a darker color. 
Well, I wish you guys could smell the honey smell. It's lovely, lovely scent in here. I'm very thankful to have a warm, dry shop. Even in the summer, if it was warm outside, you probably wouldn't want to do this outside because unless you had some kind of totally closed, <laughs> screened area to do it in, because you would have bees all over. But they are all very securely in their beds, it seems, today, not wanting to come out. I don't know, they're probably not sleeping, they're probably doing something in the hive, but with the snow out there, they're not out. And with the snow out there, I'm not doing this outside. So, fortunately, that wood stove here in the corner of the shop gives me a nice warm area to work on this. And I would have liked to do this and ideally done it, you know, like the day or the next day after I, I pulled it uh, out of their hive. I just knew I had to get some of those veggies out of the ground before I couldn't get in the ground anymore. I had to get some of the, you know, soil amending and composting done while I could still access the ground as well. So I've been racing the last bunch of days to get that done. And these just sat over in the cool corner of the shop waiting for me to have time to get to them. But here we go. We've spun out most of the partial frames that we had pulled. And now we are going to do a load of, should be three good uh, full frames like this one which is really exciting. So if you've been following along on the bee journey, I wasn't sure that we would uh, even get any harvest at all this year. Um, I would just have been happy if they managed to produce enough to feed themselves. I didn't know if they could do that successfully. So this is quite thrilling. We were able to leave them with a lot of excellent honey. This is extra that we get to enjoy. You can tell I've got it warm in here because now but it's uncapped. The honey is trying to drip out. So there's one frame. These have been sitting over here just in uh, in my spare swarm trap, which of course is not being used at this time of year. And I'll spin that back around, keep all the mess on one side. This is set up so two people could like sit across the table from each other and both work it, uncapping a frame together. But uh, Clay's at work today. He would love to be here for this kind of thing. But it's just me, so I'm just using the one side. Well, me and Burley's sleeping over there under the edge of this little table. Just a snoozing peacefully, but he wouldn't be so good at this job. So we're gonna get this all uncapped and then watch it spin out. And this honey is all totally natural, no chemical treatments used, no, no kind of sprays or mite treatments or anything. Um, I can't guarantee you that it's completely organic because the bees forage wherever they forage. We did provide a lot of the flowers they harvested based on my observations here on our property, but they also certainly did a lot of foraging off of it. We live right right at the base of the mountains. So presumably they spend a good bit of the time um, on like the wild berry blooms up on the mountains and such. But I'm also sure they probably harvested some out of neighbors alfalfa fields and so on. So I'm not able to completely control what they're getting, but we did not use any chemicals and they were not fed any kind of sugar at all. So this is all natural nectar from a real plant somewhere, which makes the best kind of honey.
When we start out here, we want to go pretty slow, is what I've heard. Again, this is super easy to turn. And you'll, in a second, hear the sound of like rain, and that's honey being slung onto the sides. I don't know if the camera can see that through the lid or not. We want to go just a nice steady pace like this, just laying some of the honey out of the first side because it's pretty heavy right now with honey on both sides. And then before we go fast, we want to flip them over and sling some out of the other side as well. I'm still having to get a feel for what I need to do here. So let's pull one out and if I can show you this without dripping honey all over. Uh, not by any means all, but a lot of the weight of honey has slung out of that side. So I'm just gonna simply flip that, set it back in there, do that for all three of these. And then we will flip them back because that's what a full honey side looks like. None of that's slung out because the centrifugal force is pushing it outward. So we don't want it to try to push the heavy part that was just on the inside out through the comb and break it if we can help it. So we're going to do that. We've flipped them all, set them down in there, and we're going to spin it slowly on this side. I can see the honey drops hitting the side. I don't know if the camera can pick that up at all. Now we're gonna go just a little faster. Unload a little more of that and we'll check on it. You can still hear the raindrop sound. Okay, so now we're gonna see how much of that side appears. Oh, these are getting much lighter. Okay. There's still some honey on there, but not much. So I think we're gonna flip them back. I'm still getting a feel based on what I've watched other people do for what works best. Yeah, not a lot left on that side. So we're gonna flip it back. And this time we're gonna be able to go fast on the other side because we don't have the honey weight on this inside, trying to push out that way through the, the comb itself. Just gonna let that spin. That's what it's doing without me having my hands on it at all. My hands are right here. That's how well it's sitting and not bouncing or walking just on this cement floor. You guys can probably see the, uh, the onion pile over there on the floor. They're getting fairly cured. That's where they've been curing in the warmth by the wood stove since the outside isn't warm anymore. And the honey is adding up in the bottom here. And it does smell so good. Okay, now once again, I'm still trying to get a feel for how much I need to spin this. Looks like we need a little bit more on the original side. These frames are getting pretty lightweight. Most of the honey is gone. We're just going to give it a little bit of a speedy run yet on the other side and then call them good. Okay, 
Now these frames weigh almost nothing. If you look into the center of them there, they still look a little bit wet, but they are not, the cells are not full at all. If we get a warm enough day that the bees come outside anymore, I might stick these into the hive for them to clean out. Otherwise, I might just have to wait till next year since it's pretty wintry out there. Now, when you look clear down inside, see all the honey with some of the little uh, capped flakes that broke off, you know, of the caps sitting down in there. We're going to drain some of this into our bucket. So what we've got right here is a, this is a food grade bucket. I have a bunch of these. This one has a honey gate installed on it here that lets you drain that out. Right now it is latched securely closed. This is a little double filter. This uh, top pan is kind of a fine mesh that, um, or a, a bigger mesh, this catches the bigger chunks. And then under it is a finer mesh that will filter littler pieces. So they stuck together like that. This handy little thing kind of locks over the, the edges of a five gallon bucket, which is nice because the first little bit I tried to do was just one of our kitchen strainers and it, its handles weren't quite long enough, so it tried to fall in the bucket. So I'm gonna loosen up the honey gate on here. We're gonna open it and see what comes out. Oh, look at that. And I don't know how far, I can probably open it fairly far to get it going there. I don't want to overflow this and having it run over the, the sides if it, it's not draining through quickly enough. So that's what I'm trying to keep an eye on there. Right now it's going through. This, we'll put this all in our bucket. And then with the honey gate that's on the bottom of this, which looks just like this one, we'll be able to, you know, have it all strained and bottle it in jars. So I don't prefer to have honey or most of my food in plastic when I can help it, but it's only going to be in here for, I don't know, half hour or something till it gets strained and goes into glass. And this is a, a good container for doing this kind of thing. Oh, that's just beautiful, beautiful. I am going to slow it down just a bit so that this doesn't get too full if I walk away because I'm going to go grab a drink. I don't know what other people do, but here as we get down to the very end of that you can see it's mostly empty inside now i've just propped this back leg up on a little stack of wood to tip the bottom slightly toward the bucket so that it finishes draining out okay we've got the last little bit of our honey draining in there so i just took two before i turn the camera back on two of these little screws our nuts go right on the end of this me. I was going to say, I thought just the lid was supposed to come out, so that lets me take the lid itself off. Set that off of here really carefully. And lift the extractor basket out to clean. Put that off to the side carefully. And now this is an open tub so I can use my spatula and get the last little bit of the honey down the drain. So it's drained down to that level all by itself. But since we've still got it sitting here right in front of the wood stove, which is why I am plenty warm, I'm going to see how much more honey I can clean out this way. See, I knew there was more on those sides. And if I was patient, just let it sit here all day, that might have drained all on its own. 
where we're doing this in the shop and we don't have like a dedicated honey room, I would rather get this done and cleaned up and out of here. But you get the idea. Okay, so this, I think the camera can see with the bright shop light here, where that honey level came to in the bucket. Not sure exactly how much that is. I think five gallons in a five gallon bucket is maybe about where that candle is. So it looks more than half full to me anyway. And we're about to bottle it up. I kind of just let it sit here by the heat from the wood stove for a bit. So it could pretty much get done dripping through that strainer and everything. Um, and we're gonna see how well this honey gate works because I want to have this in glass jars for storage on the shelf. Wasn't sure what the best way was to set this up to be able to do this without dripping on the floor, so we'll find out <laughs> if I'm about to drip this all over. I want to be able to fill a jar and then cut it off without making a great big mess. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. Okay. So if I shut that down there, I'm going to get a drip, a little bit, if I do that, I think that works. Okay, I'm about to find out how many quarts we get here. This is so exciting. I can't believe that we got such a great honey harvest and hopefully with plenty out there in the hives for the ladies to be fine all winter long. For this little operation, having a second person would be handy, I think. Wow, we'll get it done. third quart jar. I don't know about your area. Raw honey in this area I know sells for $20 to $25 a quart usually. That's what I've paid when I've bought it from other semi-local beekeepers. one gallon in jars. So starting on the second gallon. I don't know if you can still see the honey line inside, but right there where my finger's touching looks to be about where the level is right now. This jar will make it a gallon and a half. Now my honey level in the bucket is right there. This jar makes two gallons. Thank you, busy little bee ladies. It's definitely running out a little bit slower now as we get to the bottom of the bucket and it's got a little less pressure behind it. Still, that is not empty. We have two and a half full gallons. This would be two and three quarters if it fills this. which it's going to, and it's still not empty. I 
Now I don't think it's gonna fill this jar full. And probably once I get off camera here, I'll leave this propped for a little while to finish draining the last little bit. But let's see how much of it fills quickly here. If this jar was full, that would be three gallons for the year. Plus we had harvested a little honeycomb and three quarters of a quart earlier when we did some of the hive rearranging like I talked about in past videos just to get a taste. So counting that we are over three gallons of honey for the year. Okay, that's slowing down enough. I'm gonna have to prop this in some way to let the rest drain. I'm not gonna let the camera run that whole time. So here's what we got. Pretty much three full gallons of honey there. A quart of cappings with some honey mixed in with them. And that doesn't count the, the almost quart we'd harvested earlier in the year. So we got over three gallons of honey in our first year of beekeeping. This is pretty awesome. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.